everyone, welcome to episode 19 of the New English Knitter podcast. My name is Lizzie and I'm known here on YouTube and on Instagram as the New English Knitter and you can find me on Ravelry as LizzieHut94. I'm coming to you from the southwest coast of Norway. Uh, I live about an hour from Bergen and I live with my husband and our miniature poodle Tilly. Today's episode is going to be all about the baby related or child related knits that I've been working on in the past few months. I've mostly finished objects but I also have a couple of works in progress. Uh, last week's episode I talked about all the garments that I've been working on in the past few months. Um, I decided to split up the projects because I just had a lot to talk about and I thought that baby child related knitting might not be everyone's cup of tea so if it's not I hope you'll um, come back and join me in the next episode where I put everything back together again. So I'm just going to dive straight in and start with this here which is um, the Tyrell Tunga newborn onesie also known as the new foot uh, baby body new foot body in Norwegian and this is a pattern by I believe it's pronounced Shah but I'm not entirely sure it's a pattern that I found on Ravelry um, quite a while ago I've knit one of these before uh, which I gifted to my sister it's 50 Norwegian krona which is about four pounds and it's a fingering weight pattern and it's worked flat um, back and forth which I thought was quite interesting um, and I really liked the cables, cable design on it and it's got this nice, I think it's um, either called seed stitch or moss stitch, the one where you're um, knitting the pearls and purling the knits on each row it creates this really nice um, uh, kind of texture where the button band is. And I've made this out of uh, Drops Baby Merino in the colour 17, also known as beige. Um, I really like knitting out of the Drops brand. Um, I think they have really good, um, really good yarn quality and choices of different types of yarns and different colours and they're quite affordable as well. So uh, one ball of... Um, 150 gram ball of the Drops Baby Merino is about three pounds. And this uh, used up almost exactly three balls, so about nine pounds to make this. Although I did get some of the yarn on sale, so it was actually a little bit cheaper than that. Um, and I knit the size 18 to 24 months. Just put it in. <laughs> it's really hard to. Um, hold things up so that I don't look really awkward. Um, <laughs> I did make a modification in that I drip, uh, dripped, I dropped the um, eyelet detailing. So I just um, knit plain stockinette um, on this section here and on the back as well. Um, so yeah, I knit size 24 months and the pattern is written for sizes um, that run from a premature up to 24 months. Um, I actually was intending for this to be a little bit smaller because I did do a gauge swatch, which I worked out that my gauge was um, tighter than it said in the pattern. And so I, I went for the big, biggest size thinking that it would end up to be smaller but I think it's actually worked out to be the size that it was intended in the pattern so I don't know how that's worked out but um, it doesn't really matter because it wasn't for anyone in particular um, so it didn't really matter what size it end what size it ended up being um, so yeah I really like this pattern um, you do have to concentrate quite a bit in the beginning um, to kind of keep, yeah, just uh, keep an eye on where you are on, in the pattern and um, make sure you're doing the right things in the right sections. Um, so just open it up a bit. So it is knit um, back and forth flat. And, um, but once you've done, you know, 
um, a few rows and you've kind of started establishing the cabling, it becomes a lot more kind of mindless and really easy to work on without, I didn't have to keep looking at the pattern. It does help that I've knit one before um, and especially skipping the eyelet detailing, I didn't need to keep it, uh, looking back at the chart. So it's worked um, like this, flat. Um, and obviously you separate the sleeves and those in it in the round. And then you end up with um, all these buttons down the side and at the bottom as well. Um, the first one I made, I actually uh, ended up not putting buttons on it. I used poppers. And that is purely because um, I'd forgotten to knit the buttonholes <laughs> as I was knitting it. So it does say in the pattern to, you know, include buttonholes every however many centimetres it is as you're working. Um, but that's, you don't really get any reminders. Um, <laughs> so I completely forgot last time. This time what I did was I put in, every time I made a buttonhole, I added in a little stitch marker um, into the buttonhole so that it was kind of a reminder as I was knitting um, that I needed to do the buttonholes and uh, that worked out quite well actually. So I'm glad I did that. Um, I used these really cute little, um, see if I can get it to focus. Nope. <laughs> little um, heart buttons which I think are really cute. Um, I found those in a shop called Stop or Steel here in Norway. Um, I think that shops in a couple of other European countries as well um, so it might be worth looking into if you're in Europe. Um, I've got the details of the buttons that I used on my project page on Ravelry which will be linked below. Um, I don't need to be fiddling with this. I'll do that up later. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed making that. I actually cast this on um, because we were on holiday and we were going over to our new place. Um, we have a, a farmhouse over in the east of Norway and my husband's family was coming to visit and I wanted to work on something that I didn't need to concentrate too much on that was a bit more mindless. So I was working on that while they were there. Um, and it was a really fun knit. So I recommend that pattern uh, if you're looking for something. I think I'm gonna use this pattern as a basis just to kind of um, like create my own version of it. Um, if, if you wanted to make something in the round, for example, you could just change the pattern to be knit in the round and um, you could just um, minus the edge detailing on one of the on one of the edges to make the stitch count correct for working in the round. So as if, because you know, if you get rid of, rid of the buttons, then you need to remove one side of the button band. Um, so what I might do is next time knit the whole thing in the round and um, still keep this kind of button band, but it will be more like a faux button band. Um, so I can just sew some buttons on that aren't actual, um, you know, it do doesn't open up, it's not functional, but I'll still keep the, um, the bit that opens up at the bottom um, for ease of access for nappy changing. Um, and I thought I might also just kind of experiment, play around with the patterning on the front and the back, like maybe adding in some um, nice kind of pearl um, patterning, a textured pattern. Um, so yeah, we'll see if, uh, if I ever get around to that, but um, it's quite nice to make use of the patterns that you buy, I think, and have, have a bit of a go of changing them and making them your own, I think is fun as well. Um, so yeah, that's actually the only like garment that I've made, that I've knitted. Um, I've also made a few toys. So I've been wanting to use up some leftover yarn that I have, um, and I thought a good way to do that would be to make some toys. Um, my, uh, one of my best friends has actually just had a baby, so I made her um, like a little gift package of different things that I'd made. And one of those things was a toy that was called, it's a pattern on Ravelry, it's a free pattern called Sunny Bunny 
by Sarah Ude, I think, um, which is a fingering weight pattern and it's supposed to look like a little bunny rabbit and I thought it was really sweet. Um, mine did not look like a bunny rabbit. I'll see if I can uh, put a picture up on the screen, but I think it ended up looking a lot more like a mouse somehow. I followed the pattern exactly. Um, I did use fingering weight yarn and yeah, I don't really know what happened, but it did not look like a bunny rabbit. So I ended up calling it um, a mouse instead. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but um, I mean it worked out. I still ended up with a toy, but I wasn't it wasn't quite what I'd had in mind um, And I know that um, Sometimes I think crochet works better for making toys because you can like crochet in the round and it's a bit easier to make like a 3d um, Thing out <laughs> out of the yarn like a 3d shape um, for the toys so then I went on to try and do some crochet and I'm not a crocheter at all. I don't really have a lot of experience with crochet. I actually started crocheting um, before I started knitting. Like I made one, I did a, did a crochet blanket and then I got really got into the knitting um, from dipping my toes into crochet. Um, so I have done a little bit of crochet before, but not a lot. But I thought I would try and just follow uh, a pattern. So I found um, this one on Ravelry. This is called um, Tana the Triceratops by Nicole Chase. And I just thought it was really cute. Um, and like I said, I wanted to use up some leftovers. So I've kind of included a lot of different colors here. Um, this is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It's four US dollars. And the pattern's actually written for a worsted weight yarn, but I decided to use DK um, just because that's what I had. And I figured I could just change the hook size that I was using and um, I would still get the same end result, just maybe a different size. That's the nice thing about crochet toys is you can um, easily just, um, you don't have to think about your gauge necessarily. You just need to use a hook size that's good for the yarn that you're using and yeah it will end up being whatever size it ends up being if, if that's something that you don't mind um, so I used the yarn I'm using for this is called um, Stylecraft Special DK which is a 100% acrylic yarn that's um, quite inexpensive so I think on Wool Warehouse, I paid about two pounds for a 100 gram ball of this yarn. Um, I'm assuming it's still the same price. I mean, I bought it um, a couple of years ago, probably to make that blanket, and I ended up with quite a lot of leftovers. So I've only used that yarn in this toy. Um, I found the, pa the pattern quite easy to follow. Um, considering I haven't done crochet before, I just had to look up the terminology and, you know, on the internet it's really easy to find um, uh, tutorials and things on how to do different types of stitches, but not a lot of different types of uh, crochet stitches are used in this. Um, I did make a small mistake in that um, the, sh the shaping on the head I did wrong because it's like, it explains what to do on each round or each row, I can't remember what the correct terminology is, but I was following each step and then I didn't realise that the next step was going to be for a certain number of rows, rounds, so I just did it once instead of um, more times. So I ended up with um, quite a short nose, so I re, um, and then I, I still stuffed it and I finished it, but it just looked a bit strange, <laughs> so I crocheted the first part of the head again and kind of like attached it onto the front and filled that as well so that it ends up um, sticking out a bit more. Um, what else can I say? I think that's it really. I'm really happy with it um, and I'm glad I purchased the pattern because um, it was quite well written and it had even had some photos showing you like how to put everything together and what everything should look like. Um, and I found that quite helpful. Um, 
So after I made that one, I really wanted to make another one because it was honestly just so much fun. So I found this pattern on Ravelry uh, and I love this so much. This is um, called Orbit the Dragon by Projectarian. And the best part is this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and I think it was made as part of a kind of like a crochet along because um, something that like part of the pattern was released um, like it wasn't all released together so it comes as a few different documents PDF documents so um, like one document will cover like the head and another one will be maybe the body and the tail I can't remember exactly how it's broken up um, so that's a, a little bit frustrating maybe that you have it as like four separate documents um, but it's free and the pattern is really really well written um, and really, really good um, tips and um, things on how to put it together to make it look the way you want it to so that it sits um, upright and doesn't fall over. And it includes like photos and things um, when it's describing how to do that. And I found that really helpful. Um, and this I used, so it's DK weight pattern and I did use mostly DK weight, a little bit of sport, just scraps that I had, leftovers. Um, so I used a combination of that Stylecraft special DK and then I also used a little bit of Malabrigo um, Arroyo. So this, this colour on the body is Malabrigo and this um, purple on the tail is Malabrigo and then the rest is um, that style craft, I think. Um, oh, and this one on the front is something else. Um, I'll try and put everything on my projects page on Ravelry, um, all the different colorways and things. Um, yeah, this, this is a super great pattern. Um, in the pattern, it does have like these kind of long floppy ears to go with it. Um, but I wasn't really sure. Um, I have made one of the ears and I've kind of held it up next to it and um, it does look nice, but I don't know because I think it looks really nice without as well. Um, so I haven't quite decided if this is the finished object or not. Um, I might add the ears on at a later stage. I guess it's finished for now. Um, but the ears, um, I also added in, um, this isn't in the pattern, but I added in a bit of, I cut out the shape of the ear with, um, I cut it out of, um, the plastic that comes inside a cereal box to make the ears a little bit crinkly because I thought that could be fun like if I end up um, like giving this or using it um, for a child then it might be nice um, to have the ears a little bit crinkly as well um, so yeah uh, the other thing I wanted to to do is name name this because I love it so much but I don't know what to name him slash her so if you have any suggestions of uh, a name for this cute little dinosaur, then please write it down below. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see what people can come up with. Um, so those are the toys that I've made. Um, definitely um, gonna be looking to do more of that in the future, I think. Um, I think I kind of like, have kind of like phases with my, with my knitting or with my crafts. And, um, making those two kind of satisfied that for a little while, but I might make some more in the future. And I still have quite a lot of that um, Stylecraft DK left over. So, um, and it's really perfect for toys. I try not to buy um, a lot of like acrylic based yarns now, um, just because um, I think there's better things for the environment that you can buy. But seeing as I have it left over, I'm gonna use it up. Um, yeah, and then um, a work in progress that I have um, is hopefully going to end up as a blanket. Um, I started this back in February um, and I'm not following a, a pattern for this. I'm just kind of ma making it up. I'm basically doing um, just knitted squares and I'm going to join them all together at the end. And then I'm using like, um, different stitch patterns in in the squares um, and I can't 
I can't remember what these stitch patterns are called. I did write it down somewhere, but um, I've got, I think this one's like a seed stitch. Um, then we've got, I think this one is called a waffle stitch. Um, I really can't remember what this one is, but just nice little like different textures. Um, I think this is another waffle stitch. So those are some big squares and then I've done like a bunch of smaller squares as well with just different like textured. So I think what I did as I, I googled like um, knit and purl um, knitting charts or knit purl uh, knitting patterns um, and then I just found, I think that's supposed to go that way, yeah this way is the right side. Um, so I'm just holding them up because I genuinely can't remember what they're called. I just followed a bunch of different ones and I'll end up putting them all together. Um, but yeah, really fun. And I'm using, um, most of this yarn is from the Lion Brand, Lion Brand Mandala, um, which comes as like a big yarn cake that changes colours. And I had that in my stash for ages because it was gifted to me and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. And in the end, I decided just to um, break up the colours and use it in this blanket. So I wound up um, lots of little balls like this. Um, so I think, uh, so, and I've got this, so a few of the colours had uh, more yarn in it and then some of them had like a, a much smaller amount. So with these big ones, I use these for the bigger squares and then these small ones, I think I can get like one or two of the smaller squares. Um, so yeah, just keep <laughs> holding up. I really like this color actually. This was from the, um, from the Lion Brand one. And this one. Oh, and another big one here. Um, I'm not only using that Lion Brand Mandala, I have other scraps that I'm using as well. Um, for example, this one, I think this is a Dala Garn that I had left over that I thought might be nice. So I'm kind of using colour palette of like beige, cream, um, like kind of greyish and then a little bit of like orange like this. And this one, like a yellowy, mustardy colour. This one's really nice. This is actually um, that Stylecraft Special DK that I've been mentioning. Really nice kind of like golden orange colour. And I'm considering maybe adding in a little bit of light green, although maybe not. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, yeah, so I'm having fun with that. I actually haven't worked on that in quite a while. Um, so I might get back into it now that I started looking at it again um, I have blocked them all I have more squares to make but I'm, I'm not really sure how big I'm gonna make the blanket um, the only thing is that I'm not quite sure how to join the squares together so if anyone has any ideas or tips um, about how to do that whether it's knitted or crocheted or um, yeah I'm not sure whether I want um, like a uh, if I want the join to be like a feature, like another color, or if I want the join to be hidden. I'd quite like the blanket to be relatively re reversible. Um, these big squares, all the stitch patterns that I've chosen for the big squares are reversible. Um, the small ones aren't necessarily like properly reversible, but they don't look bad on the wrong side either. So it's still, you know, kind of reversible. Anyway, I'm rambling. That's um that's my blanket that I'm making um yeah so actually that's all the knitting slash crochet that I have um but I've also been sewing a couple of things two of the things I don't have with me because I gifted them to my friend um but I do have one of them with me uh so let's see well what the things I made for my friend were a teddy bear and um, and a dress. So I'll put up a picture or two, whatever I can find of what I made. Um, the bear is 
a pattern that I found on Etsy. Um, I'll write it up on the screen or link it down below or something. But it's called the Memory Memory Teddy, I think, by is it like Melody or something? Um, and I have basically very, very little experience with sewing. I've always wanted to learn how to sew and um, just kind of never have. <laughs> um, I've always been a bit too afraid to kind of uh, jump into it. But recently, a couple of months ago, probably I was having dinner with one of, um, me and my husband were having dinner with our neighbors and she was showing me all this really nice stuff that she had made, um, that she had sewed, and basically give, gave me the push that I needed to get into sewing. She, um, she lent me a pattern for a dress, um, which I'll put up a picture of that. Um, I've given the pattern back now, so I actually can't remember um, the name of, what, of it or anything, but it was a really nice little dress that uses uh, like cotton, like your kind of typical patchwork, like quilting fabric, I think. So she thought that would be like a good be beginner thing for me to make. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it, so I ended up making a teddy bear. Um, so I've actually started making another teddy. Um, so this <laughs> it looks a bit freaky um, before it's stuffed. Um, and I haven't put any eyes or nose on it yet really nice um, fabric it's kind of like a dark green and the first one I made was like a kind of like patchworky scrappy um, teddy and this one I decided to do a bit more of a clean clean look um, with kind of like an all-over color and then just different fabric for the um, feet and ears so I mean you can kind of tell what it's gonna look like um, but yeah, I mean, I think the pattern's good. I don't really know a lot about sewing, but I managed to follow it okay and I don't have a lot of experience. So um, this one I've actually made hand sewing. So I just used like a um, back stitch um, because I do have a sewing machine that I've borrowed from my mother-in-law, uh, which is actually back there on the table. You probably can't see it. Um, but I struggle a bit with sitting at the table for long periods of time. Um, I get like a really bad back and um, yeah, I just get a lot of pain to be honest. So I decided to just hand stitch this one. I knew it would be slower, but then I can sit on the sofa and um, with my back supported and um, then yeah, I'm not in as much pain. So <laughs> that's that really. Um, so yeah, that's um, all the kind of baby child related stuff that I've been making recently. Um, sorry if this one's been a little bit rambly. Um, I don't feel very with it today. But um, yeah, that that's it. Um, don't forget to leave a comment below on if you have any name suggestions for this cute little um, dinosaur. I've actually been using it as a pin cushion. Um, while I've been sewing because um, yeah I don't have any children at the moment so I just put in my pins like this makes a great pin cushion <laughs> when I'm sewing um, if you have any suggestions of any um, good patterns like knitting or crochet for kind of babies or children please leave them down below because I'm always looking for new patterns um, and yeah thank you for watching today Make sure to tune in for my next episode where I'll be talking about uh, all my projects together in one, back to normal. Okay, bye.